Welcome to another scouting video. Um, we're getting right here before the season. It is uh, getting towards the end of August and everybody's thinking about it. So we want to put out a couple more. It's actually one video, but it's going to be split into two because it's going to be just a little bit longer if we don't do that. Um, but this is going to be the first part of scouting video with Mr. Nathan Killen. If you don't know Nathan Killen, get on Facebook real, real quick and search that name and you'll find a whole bunch of big bucks and big mountain bucks um, on a Facebook page. And it's awesome. Nathan is a great mountain hunter, one of the best we know, so much so that we brought him on board. We're going to let the cat out of the bag. Nathan Killen is 100% part of the Stick Boys. Um, he is part of our crew now. So hopefully you guys enjoy watching because you're going to get to see him a whole lot more. Not to put too much pressure on him, um, but he's going to be talking <laughs> the camera around this fall, and uh, hopefully you guys will get to keep up with it. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this video. Nathan, we can't be happy to have you on board, buddy. Yeah, man, I'm excited to uh, uh, join just a good group of guys and, and friends. You know, we've become friends over the past few years. and Right. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to it. Oh, it's gonna be. We're gonna have a. We're gonna have a heck of a time. No matter whether we do anything good or not, we're gonna have a heck of a time. I'll guarantee you that. So let's That's jump right. straight into this. This. Uh, <clears throat> this scouting video. Um, now I want to talk to you a little bit about. This hillside right here, as you can see, it's got a lot of uh, pine on it, and uh, there's actually a lot of pin oaks in there. That's just phenomenal bedding for all deer, actually. And uh, but I know that a lot of does use that during uh, the fall. And this is uh, another secondary ridge that comes off of a main ridge here. It's actually uh, pointing uh, south. But so it gets a lot of sun exposure plus we got a lot of cover in there i mean it, it's very thick in there and um, you have a lot of bucks cruise through those type of spots and this transitions into uh eastern face just around this way right here so you know the sun comes up in the east and that face around through there is the very first spot that gets any sunlight so uh a lot of your big bucks will stage up right in right there first thing in the morning you have your western wind coming across the top of this knoll here and uh, so they can smell anything up above them and and during midday that they can get up and just start walking around this direction here and any doe that is in there you know they're, they're going to be able to uh, uh, smell where they're at and and actually go straight to them but um, that, that is just a fantastic spot uh, to hunt around. I wouldn't hunt right in it. You know, the, uh, these pines actually transition uh, into uh, uh, some more open timber back around up in the head of this hollow here. And a lot of the deer feed back up on top. So, you know, set, setting up somewhere right in right through there, especially late in the evening, you know, once your thermals start dropping down into this hollow and the deer coming around, you know, that would, It'd just be a good situation to uh, to capitalize on, and uh, you could easily catch a uh, a big buck, you know, cruising through there. But um, just a really good, really good area right there. First of all, this first place we're looking at here, Nathan, there is a a side hill that's got a little bit of everything. It's got a lot of terrain um, diversity, a lot of habitat diversity, and that there's, um, as you explained, the sun comes up there first. And um, so we'll, like always with these scouting videos, we wanna know, or I wanna kind of push out, how can the viewer use this information? So what is it about this side hill that makes Nathan Killen just hammer in and, and what can a viewer look for um, in the areas they hunt that maybe it could be something that's similar? Well, uh, I know a lot of people have heard me talk about east-facing uh, side hills or ridges or points or anything like that, and that's what this is, really. You know, you have an east-west running ridge, and that is the very end, uh, actually the east end of that ridge. In other words, it, it comes out there uh, in the eastward direction, and it just drops off, uh, you know, very steep. And uh, <clears throat> But uh, I do most of the hunting over on the north side of that or uh, and the northeast corner of that uh, eastern face there that you'll see. But what you're looking at there behind me is actually the south face. And what you have there is some just really good uh, thermal cover for the deer. 
you know, uh, you got pines there and you have uh, uh, mountain laurel. Yep. And uh, generally, that's where you're going to find your does. And, uh, and the bucks, they're going to be more around the uh, north side, northeast uh, uh, point of that, the end of that ridge. And, uh, and the reason they like that so well is because, you know, in our part of the uh, world, we have, you know, westerly winds and, uh, and, you know, northwest winds or southwest winds. And that just sets up really good for them, you know, because they're on the eastern end of that ridge. And, you know, with the wind coming out of the west like that, you know, it's coming right across the top of that uh, uh, ridge there. And then also, you know, you have the sun. You know, it rises in the east, so that's the very first place that, uh, you know, the sun starts warming the face of the earth. You start getting thermal uh, air movement there. So they just work together uh, and, and just create a really good, you know, situation for the deer. And, uh, and one thing that I like about spots like that is I feel like, and, and you know, you've heard people talking about the hunting the wind that's yeah, almost wrong for you and almost right for them. But that really creates that scenario, you know. And uh, and I feel like if you've uh, got that scenario, then you're more likely to have daylight movement. You know, you're still going to have to be close to where he's bedding at, but uh, and it's a little bit tricky getting setting up in those places. But uh, uh, I've, uh, that actually that area that you're looking at there, just barely on the back side of it. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but in 2019, I killed a uh, a big uh, buck in there, and that's that's actually where it was at, and he was headed to that eastern face there. But, you know, the bucks, they'll, they'll bed there early and then uh, mid-morning they'll get up and uh, come right around that uh, eastern face there and, and come into the south there where the does are at. And, you know, while he's coming around that, you know, he, he's got that uh, westerly wind pulling that scent right straight to him, you know. Yeah. So uh, it, it just works out really good for him. And uh, if you can get set up in there in the right spot, it works out good for the hunter. So Absolutely. I think that's a – a big misconception that I, that I think a lot of guys have is they look for wins based on what works for them. And a lot of times that deer's not going to be anywhere near there <laughs> if it's going to put him at a disadvantage. Well, this is a really a good example of a good spot that a buck would definitely bed. I've got a nice bed right here and I've looked around and there's only a couple more beds in this area. If there was a lot of beds in here, that would tell me that this is most likely um, a doe group that was bedding in here, but there's just, like I said, just two or three beds in here, and they uh, got really, really good cover around. This is on a secondary ridge, just off the end of a point, and uh, <clears throat> you can tell that he has laid here with uh, our predominantly westerly wind. The wind right now is blowing this direction. Most likely he was probably turned looking this direction so you know he could see anything coming up through this cover smell anything coming from back this direction so um, but this is just a really good spot uh, that a buck will be abetting in and obviously he's left his sign here I can see some rubs around the side of the hill got a faint trail coming around through here so uh, of course got the uh, this would be you know for late winter uh, when temperatures are really cold, he's probably bedded here. Uh, this is the southern exposure here, so uh, just uh, and it's a great place to look for sheds too. You know, uh, I'll probably meander around through this, looking at, on my way up to the top of the mountain here. This next part of this video is uh, you're explaining. You're talking about a, a, a specific bed um, in a in a roto thicket. It looks like on the side of a hill. Um, bug bedding is something that is talked about a lot, but I'm not 100% sure that it's maybe understood or used correctly, or, or and maybe it maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, so explain to me how how would you use this this buck bed? Like if if, if a viewer finds a bed that, that matches this description, how would you use that against um, a, against a buck this fall? Um, maybe take us through that just a little bit. Well, uh, of course, in in our mountains, you know, bucks. Their general home range could be anywhere from one square mile to two or three square miles. And he's going to have several different locations, you know, within his home range that he's going to be in. But I think what you can learn from that is exactly where at within uh, those areas that he's going to be in, how he'll be in, you know. And I think that's one thing that you can learn from that spot right there. You know, again, of course, now this is on the south face here, but, uh, you know, that, that bed was, uh, you know, late winter. 
Uh, so, you know, it was, it was, he was probably using it whenever it was really cold. There was uh, acorns very, very close by. So, you know, uh, he was there pretty often, but, you know, he had, uh, it, again, you know, that westerly wind comes straight across his back there. And, you know, uh, uh, the uh, midday thermals, you know, coming up and it's, you know, just uh, again, creating another situation or good, good setup for him. Right. But, uh, you know, I think one thing that you got to realize is whenever you're looking at buck bedding, it's not a specific bed and it's not necessarily a specific area. It's going to be more of a specific type of cover and terrain features within his uh, home range is what you're going to be looking for. And that's going to change a little bit, you know, uh, depending on the time of season. You know, October, generally, it's always going to be close to uh, uh, a good food source. They're not traveling very far. And uh, to find those spots, you know, bucks, they, they really start uh, changing, you know, from about the 20th or 22nd of September. You know, you start, you, you have their pictures all through the summer, and then all of a sudden they disappear. Yeah. But what's happened is, is, uh, those bucks have really shrank down their uh, core area, and uh, and to find them, you're going to have to start looking for places that they're, uh, you know, feeding. You know, white oaks are starting to drop in, and uh, the bachelor groups are breaking up, so they've really shrank their uh, core area. But to find them, you have to be really mobile, but you've got to be strategic about, you know, whenever you start looking for them. But anyway, they're going to be close to bedding or uh, close to food for their bedding, and generally that's going to be in steeper type areas and um and i'm going and whenever i'm looking for them i'm going to you know look for the freshest buck sign that i can find right. and then during november you know that bedding is going to change just a little bit it's going to be more in relation to uh rutting type uh places you know where it, it, you know it's going to be closer to be, uh, doe bedding and stuff like that and uh then once we transfer into december then it's going to be more resemble of what October was like. You know, they're going to be on red oak acorns that's left over from the season, and they're going to, you know, uh, they're going to be bedding close to food again, you know. And uh, But in every situation, I'm always, uh, whenever uh, I'm hunting, I'm always hunting closer to uh, bedding than I am uh, where they're feeding. Right. You know, uh, bucks, you know, they, they tend to travel, you know, during the nocturnal times, you know, or they're, they're more nocturnal than anything, so Right. Yeah, get really close to where they're bedding. Yeah. All right, I want to talk to you about something that's uh, really important, especially whenever it comes to accessing your stand here. This is off on the north side, and I hunt probably 90% of the time on north sl side slopes. What we have here is we've got a, a secondary ridge that comes down over to my left that has a whole lot of mountain laurel on it and that transitions into a, a nice open hollow here and this hollow generally always has a lot of acorns uh, every year and um, the deer really like to feed on this eastern slope where all these big red oaks are and stuff and then over on this side we have another secondary ridge that comes off now this secondary ridge goes down and uh, actually there's a saddle in it. That's where uh, I hunt at most of the time. And, uh, and the deer like to bed out on the end of that point. There's a lot of uh, mountain laurel and pine and stuff like that there. But what I want to talk to you about is access in this area. Early in the morning, you have thermals that drop down into here. Well, what you don't want to do is come around the head of this hollow to access where uh, I'm hunting down here because anything that's down in here below me as I'm coming around through here they're going to know that I'm in the area uh, way before I even get to my stand because all my scent is going to be blowing right straight down to them you know uh, I'm looking north here so you know most of the wind is going to be coming out of the west southwest and so whenever I'm actually in my stand you know most of my uh, scent is blowing back over into uh, this country over in here and you know the deer are working back and forth between these two thickets here but uh, I just wanted to talk about you know the access and to keep in mind you know early morning the thermals is dropping so uh, you, do, you don't want to come in above your deer in a situation like that if I'm coming uh, sometimes I do come in from this direction but what I will do is I will stay on the back side of the mountain 
and make my way around and then pop over and come down the ridge to where my stand is at. That way my, the thermals is not taking my scent to the deer. And uh, I also come in from this direction here, which is from the west, and uh, not very many of the deer come from that direction, so that's actually the safest direction to come from. But uh, just always keep in mind, you know, not only the location of your stand, you know, as far as uh, wind and stuff like that, but also your uh, entrance and exit, you know, to and from your stand. So just something else to think about. So the last part of this video, um, you cover access, getting to one of your favorite spots you were talking about. I'm on the back side of, a, I think it was the back side of a ridge or a saddle. Um, so take us through access. How important is access? Um, I know the answer is very important, but explain to us about uh, access, why it's important and uh, why we should pay attention to it. And uh, maybe a little bit about that place. Okay. Well, in, in that a very specific spot, which it applies to, you know, anywhere that you hunt, but right there, uh, you know, I'm on the north side. So uh, sometimes I will come up from the south side to cross over if the wind is right and stuff. But, you know, early in the morning, uh, like I'm talking about right there, you have, you know, thermals that's, uh, you know, dropping. And uh, so you have to be really careful about your scent, you know, dropping down into where your deer might be coming from, especially, you know, if you're up, you know, behind uh, some farm country and you're hunting, with, you know, back up behind it, you know, your deer's going to be coming most likely from down low. And work on their way back up uh, to the top of the mountain early in the morning so you know if, you, if you're up high uh, then uh, especially when you're accessing into those places you know those deer uh, are more than likely going to know you're there before you even get settled in because you know those uh, that cold air is, is taking your scent right straight down to them you know and uh, it would be kind of the opposite you know for uh, you know late or early evening you know you, your thermals could possibly take uh, scent up to the deer, you know, that they're bedding high and uh, if you're accessing from below, you know. So that's, you know, two things that uh, people generally don't think of, you know. You don't want to hurt where you're hunting, you know, before you even get there. But, you know, not only that, uh, you know, uh, not touching anything on your way in, you know, most of the places that I hunt in the mountains, I have um, <clears throat> trails cut into those places. That way, where I walk in, I'm not touching anything, you know. Matter of fact, the only thing that I want touching is the soles of my boots, you know, because, uh, you know, any deer that comes through there, if it smells or crosses where you've walked through there before you even, or before it even gets to where you're at, then, you know, game's over right then. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you know, and another thing about access is on your way to your stand, you don't want to walk through where your deer are at, you know, before you even get to there. So, you know, just always think about, you know, planning the route into where you're going um, and, one thing that I like to do is, uh, especially early in the morning, is, is approach where I'm hunting from, uh, you know, low. Again, I'm using the thermals to get in that way. And, uh, you know, generally I'm hunting secondary ridges. So I, generally I know where my deer's coming from, and I will come up a hollow or two over from where I'm uh, actually hunting, and I'll come up and then I'll cross, you know, a secondary ridge or so over to where I'm uh, going to climb up a tree. So, you know, that access is just as important as uh, hunting the wind, you know, while you're up the tree, you know, uh, you, you don't want to run your hunt before you even get there. Right. I, I think it was the Wenzel brothers talked about, Bla it's like you could picture blaze orange paint all over your hands and your legs and your arms and whatever you touch going through the woods turns orange. I mean, that's the smell. And then Alan talks about on the uh, a lot. Uh, talks about residual scent a lot. He hammers that on yeah. a podcast a lot. Yeah. Um. And and that's you know that's super 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 important. A lot of folks don't think about that. You know. Um. And I'm guilty too. And and a lot of times, I've heard you say it, Nathan. I think one of the best things I've heard anybody say on the podcast, um, was you talking about how important getting out is. Yeah. If you're going to go back to that spot because I'm just I. I'm bad to just, I can almost smell supper when I come out of that tree and I just want to go home. You know, I want to go, go home, go to bed. I want to eat whatever it is. I'm tired and you can really mess some things up for the next, you know, the next few hunts. Um, so if it's somewhere you want to hunt, you better think about stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. You got to take care of where you're hunting, you know, whenever uh, you're talking about the end of the day, you know, whenever you get down out of your stand, you know, you, you don't have to hunt till black dark, you know, so, uh, and it's not legal to do so anyway. So what I do is, you know, at the end of shooting light, I start easing down out of my tree, and I try to actually be, you know, down out of my tree and away from it 
uh, you know, and be able to travel 100 yards or so without a flashlight, you know, if possible. And I don't, you know, undress or anything, you know, I wait till I get away from my hunting area before, you know, I start undressing. And and the same as going into a stand, you know, uh, I'll get within a, a hundred yards or so, and then I'll I'll dress, and then that way, whenever I get to my tree, I can go straight at the tree, right. no messing around the bottom of it. So, yeah. and wear gloves, you know, when you're going in, wear gloves. That way, if you have to touch anything, you know, you at least you have some kind of a barrier between you and the limb or whatever you're touching. So. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Well, man, I can't thank you enough for uh, getting on here, helping us out with this this uh, video. Um, these little cutaways, man, they, I think they help because they get us just a little bit of a, of a second thought process going. And um, we're going to, like I said, we're going to split this video into two parts. Um, so you can look for the next one probably next week sometime. Um, hopefully that hopefully that'll happen. Um, but more than anything, get excited about this fall because I know I am so excited here at Sick Boys um, with us expanding our crew. We're going to have some more content. Um, you're going to get to see this guy in action and watch his work his magic all fall um, on the Stick Boys channel. And that is, that can't, I just so happy. I can't stand it. It just makes me grin. I can't wait. Man. I can't. Well, I hope I don't let it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not going to. You're absolutely not going to. But hope you guys enjoy. Hey, if you want to see some kind of scouting video, you want to see something specific, leave it in the comments below. Make sure you hit the bell icon and the subscription uh, or the subscribe button. And go check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Stick Boys. And don't forget to check out the podcast you can find it anywhere you like to find podcasts um it's just about everywhere and we talk basically bow hunting 100 percent of the time there's no gear talk or anything like that it's all bow hunting so if that's if that's your uh, if that's your cup of tea go check it out and uh yeah we'll catch you on the next one